Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, today I got a really fun one, I think. Uh, some of my western painters and your landscape painters, you may really enjoy this one, especially if you've never added a horse and rider to something. And you don't really, with this design that I'm going to have today, need to have the horse and rider. This would make a beautiful landscape all by itself. I'm going to have a, a larger pine tree over here. You could put another one right through here so that you're looking down through and seeing some of the coastline. Now, right up back behind me here, this is what I did. So basically the front part of this thing, and this is what I love to do, and this is where I get a lot of ideas. Those of you that paint westerns with me know I love to watch westerns, and it just puts me right into the mood. Well, this was a, that's actually Tom Selleck and his co-star there writing up this little ridge line, and it's up in Montana, but I'm going to put it along the coast. And so this actual coast that I added there. So I built this photo. I took a still of the movie and then I built the, the actual photo, the coastline and everything like that in Photoshop, which is what I like to do. So it gives me a nice, uh, gives me a nice reference. So I have some of the, I grew up along this coastline right up here in uh, Oregon when I was a boy. This is actually a seat of beach and there's the Hasita Head Lighthouse right around the corner right up there that um, when I took that photo that was, uh, you know, right from the 101 freeway right there looking out over Hasita Head. And so it's a coastline I grew up with. I spent my youth up on the Oregon coast and uh, it's one I'm very familiar with and the Cascade Range and stuff like that mountains. But I like to put the mountains down into the coast. I love the coast in with the western. It's a little bit different of a subject and it works, I think, in this painting. And we're going to add it in and I'm going to show you. So what I have here is uh, it's a little bit smaller than most of the westerns I do. Most of the westerns I do is like 36 by 24. This one is going to be 24 inches this way, 18 inches this way. So it fits a standard canvas. You could use a canvas. I'm using a quarter inch uh, board here, which I really like. And then I've given it two coats of the canvas prep medium and sanded it with 180 grit scan, uh, sandpaper. And then went ahead and did my drawing. Those of you that are in the membership, I'll put a photo of my drawing and stuff that you have there that you can reproduce it if you would like. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to use that for reference. I have... It's kind of hard to see up there, but I do have several photographs that I'll be bringing down in during the painting of it so we can, so I can show you exactly what I'm looking at and then how we're going to be changing some of it to fit this scene to make it all work together. Okay, so it should be a lot of fun. The colors I'm going to use today, um, this is my standard YouTube palette. The listing of all the colors are right below in the video description. I also, like normal, have out a little bit of the open medium. Okay, which is what I like. These are the, um, let me get this too. So the yellow and stuff that I use here, these are our Heritage Multimedia paints. These are acrylic, but you know, like I, had, I answered a question so many times, not all acrylics are the same. These are new generation acrylics. I can slow the drying time down to several hours or I can speed it up. I control it with the additions of medium, one of them being the uh, extender medium, which is right inside of this little cap here, okay? So those of you that paint along with me, you know some of these things, okay? All right, so let's get right into the painting. I'm going to break this video up into two parts, okay? It's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, two parts. The first part, we're going to block in the majority. We're going to work on blocking in the scene, and then the rest of it is going to be detail. And um, I won't be able to show absolutely all the detail, but you'll have a, a, a firm grasp on how to paint this when we're done with it, okay? I'll make sure of that. All right, so I'm going to, like I work with a lot of landscapes, I'm going to work from the back to the front. And in the back, the very back of the painting sets the tone for the actual scene itself. So when one of the photos that I have here, I have what the actual, uh, here so you can see what the scene looks like. And it just helps me, I got it a little dirty right there, but it helps me identify the values there. And it, this value of this back sky here in this, in this particular photo is almost white. It's just tinged a little bit of a, and it's actually kind of a yellowish um, aqua blue, and uh, which happens a lot 
especially along the coastline. So uh, I'll, I'll be doing that. But we're, we'll start out there. Let me put that right back up here. We'll start out by taking, I'm going to use a one inch brush here. And I'm going to do it mostly acrylic uh, here. So I'm just going to add some water. This is the blocking end of it. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of the blue and a tiny bit of my yellow oxide here. And I'm going to keep this very much almost white. You can see it's down just a little bit here, down just a little. And I'm going to, I'm going to slip slap the, the colors like this, go over my mountains a bit. So every once in a while, some of that dirty blue, as you see, comes out into the painting here. I know it's hard to see that, but we uh, get just a little bit. We call this, I call this brush modeling. So sometimes a little bit more of the yellow comes out. Sometimes a touch of the more of the blue comes out. And I like that. I want this a bit lighter. A little bit of water with this. And just slow, just different kinds. And now see, we want, why I do all different kinds of brush motions here. And I want some textures and stuff too. But what that does is it gives the atmosphere the feeling of atmosphere to to the to the I know it looks very much the same here on the monitor and I have this is how I do it. sometimes you see me looking out I think I have monitors here right here that shows all the cameras that we're using right here what each camera is seeing so I can see what you're seeing and I look at that and I look at what that one is called camera two I look at camera two here and it looks very much the same color, but there is slight variations in it. And what I really want is maybe a little bit more of that kind of yellowish color. Some of that just sneaking right along that horizon line. And that starts to happen a little bit more towards the evening here. And we might come up here, let it go just, you know, in, in good landscapes, they go just a touch more blue as you get up. A little bit higher now. That's way too much blue. That phthalo blue is so powerful. So we have to be careful of that. Let's just maybe have a bit more blue sliding along the top up there. So you can, and it's kind of hard for you to see, I know, but it's a little bit more lighter blue down into some yellows there. It's perfect. <laughs> okay. And that's what I want. I want just that atmosphere. Now, the mountains, believe it or not, the mountains are almost, especially those further ones back, and they're a little bit more of a dirty blue violet, actually. And so I use that in Photoshop. Those of you that have never, and I'm a big advocate for artists using Photoshop. I know there's a lot of artists that don't. We like to go out and play plain air, plain air and all that stuff. And I agree with that, and that, you know, that is truly when you're out in nature and really see the colors. But here we don't, I, I'm not in Oregon, I'm in Nebraska right now, so it's hard for me to get to the coast to paint this, so I'll use my Photoshop. But in Photoshop, they have what's called a color picker, and you can go over and you can look at that color, and it'll tell you what color family it is. So when I put the color picker on this mountain back here to check it before I start to paint it here, it comes up with a, a little bit more of a dirty gray violet, which is made very easy by just taking some of the blue and a little burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is kind of a, a reddish or a brown color, and so that little bit of reddish takes it over just a bit to the violet. Now, it's got to be very close, and we're going to put some other colors in here, but very close to our background. And we've got to realize that, uh, you know, colors here, let me see we look, take a look at that. And so, so when you see that difference up there on the mountains, it's really hard for you to see that on that. Let me bring this down. Okay, so when you see the difference between the mountain and the sky, that's kind of what we're looking for, that difference between a mountain and sky. Now, this is one bit closer, so it'll be a little lighter. This one's just slightly further back here. And so I want this, just, believe it or not, a touch lighter because it's going to dry a little bit darker. And so I'm just going to kind of model this along like this because we have to put in light and shadow along the way. And this brush is very big to do this with. It's kind of hard. You can go to a smaller one, but I don't want these. The thing is, I don't want these little back mountain shapes to have a tremendous amount of interest here. 
I want them to kind of just sit back there, see? Very, very soft. This is our furthest plane back. And so we want that to sit just really soft. Now, I should add uh, some of the what's called the light in the dark of the painting. So I'll take a, this is one of my old favorite eights here. It's kind of hard to see that it is an eight, but it's an eight flat. And what I'll do is um, in that mountain, there's the shadow and then there's the light. And the shadow is just a touch more dirty violet here, kind of. You could you do this also with the red, which also makes a beautiful kind of gray. And, you know, using some of these different tones like this, just, and, and it, you know, touching it, modeling it up here, just gives you lovely interest. And I'll look up there and I'll see, and what we're going to do is paint shadow and light. And so that's not too bad. It might be a touch dark. So we'll add a little bit of the light to it here. And I'm going to pull down to the right side because light is coming from the left. So I'll pull down to the right here and we'll just add little marks along the way here. Little lights and darks here that are going to suggest some of the interest in those back hills. And just suggestive. And one of the problems we have as artists, at least I do, in starting in the back is I start to make perfect mountains right away and they they get too much interest for where they're going to be. So we want to be a, a little bit careful, a little bit cautious not to add too much to these. And especially your acrylics are going to dry one value darker. So what looks like maybe not enough interest might be quite a bit of interest here in just a moment when we finish some of this off. So let's put a little of that. Let's warm the light plane. So there'll be a light plane, the light side, which will be that plus maybe a little bit more yellow just to warm the light plane. So our overall mountain here is gonna be kind of a grayed color, blue-violet gray, but it'll have some touches of warmth and some touches of shadow back there. And we can always, always revisit this later. But I want to keep my marks and stuff here very simple and uh, very close together as far as value. And I just want to emulate that. So that's not too, too bad here. Maybe uh, a little bit more of a distant mark there, just like that. Maybe a touch of the light side right there, just to break that up. So that's the distance. Now what we'll do, and you can see on that back there, but what's going to happen here is, so what we put in was this very, very back one that's hard to see back there. Now we'll go right up about to this value, which is um, going to be just a, and we can even take your scale here and look at that. It's going to be no, no, darker than an eight. It's right about an eight. I guess it would help if I move my hand. So there's my eight. That's my value here, which means I have to mix it up almost to a nine. Okay, so it's got to be just a, just a tiniest touch darker than what I have here. Okay, so, and we want this really dirty here. And so it's got to be just a touch. Let's add a little white to this. And so it's, and when you look at this, here's your mountain, here's the back mountain, here's the one coming a little bit more farther forward. Maybe just a touch more blue into that. Maybe a little bit of violet and that dirty into that, that helps bring it forward. Just a touch, just a little bit here. And we'll lighten that up. And so I'm looking right here on my palette as I do this, my two mountain colors here. So that's my back mountain, and this is going to be the one coming up right in front of it. And it could have the feeling of a little bit more blue-violet. So let's just add just a touch more to that, which is a... See, see how it changes? Just subtly. See the subtle change? And that's kind of a pretty color. It'll be a little dark. So let's lighten that up. Now we can adjust all this later after we put some of this in, but 
there's a real beautiful and see it looks a lot darker than what you think and so and that's what grabs you sometimes so you look at that see I'm a little bit still this a little bit gray this is a little bit more violet and this will dry darker so believe it or not and that's the hardest thing I think and it really helps to have photos your value scale those tools right in front of you because of that rule that we talk about because color theory all the time simultaneous contrast that will bite you bites everybody bites me all the time so I have to be constantly careful of that let's go a little bit more violet here and you know since we're working from a photo which I really like the colors and stuff in this photo and we're not painting in nature we have to trust our photos and our color guides that's a little bit more violet let's and it's so funny because it's so light here and then I put it up here let's even take some of that off I have that hardcore that dark there that's going to be hard to get over so let's just push this in a few little mountainy areas there and pull that line right up in front of it so this one and this one's already dry here, so it's already, re you know, received some of its darkness here. So we're good to go on that. But this one will dry down a bit darker. And I'll just model this through, find some uh, planes. Let's get even a little bit of that warm plane right into that. That will bring some of this warmth right here. And I know you can't see it too much. But it is, you do pick that up in there, and that is working. Now, we can blur those edges if they're a little bit too perfect. Blur those edges a bit here, and I want to get rid of my drawing lines here as well. But blur those edges just a touch here. And uh, let's continue. Maybe a little bit grayer, slightly different. A little bit of water. I'm just using water. And drop this right up in front here and pull that right along in front so this is the next hill further forward here maybe a touch more violet in some of that just a little bit so you pick up just little touches of that violet especially coming in on the shadow side there like that and, you know, let it granulate. Granulate means it just drags off of my brush here. So we'll let some of that just kind of granulate through. And let's just quickly suggest a little bit more, or a forward one right in there, right on that one there. So this is what I want, that, that difference right there. Now, it's, it's a little bit dark there's a little bit more of an atmospheric blue now the atmosphere putting the atmosphere that you know it's that hazy look that you get when you look really uh, far especially along the coastline you know in those distant mountains we get that atmosphere and that atmosphere is very easy to add with acrylics and i've showed you that in some landscapes as a glaze uh, when it's dry you can also just Take a little bit of that blue and the white, which is makes that nice atmosphere. I'll add a little extender here so this stays wet. And I want to take it right up towards its value 9. So very, very light here. And I can add that atmosphere just as a real light wash, which is just like the, uh, the sky here. Okay, And you can see immediately it pushes that back. And then I'll push this back a little bit, but not so much that it's not right out in front of this one a bit. And so I'll leave some of that modeling and stuff. But as you can see, see, see what's happening is it's taking it like the sky. And let me show you here. I'll put a little more extender right here. Okay. And we'll put a light wash right over this. And so it just pushes it back. See? right back towards the sky and I'm watching and see how that just softens that back and pushes that back and so I'm watching that in comparison to this and heading to that so what these colors have to become like this color which then has to become like that color 
and that's how you get that depth. So that atmosphere is really kind of important. And you can pre-mix it up ahead of time, you know, like the mountain, make it perfect. But I like to go ahead and put the mountain in that's close and then just wash a little color over it to, to take it a little closer to the atmosphere. Put the atmosphere into that and just send that, send that back. And that works for me. That's one of my favorite ways to do it. And so, and I sometimes I do it now. Sometimes I do it towards the end of the painting. I definitely revisit it at the end of the painting. Now I'll just take a touch of some of those warmer colors here that are right in there. And let's just add a bit, a few more marks of it right in here. And, uh, into those that mountain there to give just a touch more and again if you disrupt some of your atmosphere just go back and add it again you can add some of that back in there but this will dry down and you may have to do that atmosphere a couple of times does that make sense so now we'll come in and we'll do a little bit more but sometimes and you can see it, it's hard to, you'll see there. And in one of the last landscapes I did, the palette knife technique landscape I did with the mountain in the back. And you see this with Bill Alexander, Bob Ross, all of them all the time. If you have a lot of dis dis distance, you'll see that atmosphere appear towards the bottom of a mountain. And where it gets a little bit softer again, and then you'll put the other darker mountain up in front of it. The mist, the mist that you get in between something. So, and so sometimes in some a, a painting that I want a lot of depth, I'll go ahead and add some of this through there like that. And then we'll step, and then what that out does is it allows me to step up the next or make the next one there just a little bit darker without um, making it too dark. So we'll darken this one up a little bit more violet here. Let's take this up. Let me get a, a read here as far as value. So we're now looking, we're now looking at this, this one right here, this shorter one right here. So that one is going to be no darker than a, than really drying a six. So we've got to have it about a seven. So let's just kind of mix this up a little bit more violet. And let's see what about where we, yeah, we're right about a seven, just a touch dark. Do you see that? And just a touch dark so that it'll dry to a six. So let's drop this in and let, and this is where it's going to get. So it looks like it's oh, pretty light there, but see, here's my mountains and the back. It'll appear darker right up in here. See, and see how much darker that is. So, I could go, I could leave it like that, but I could go just a touch lighter. Or if I'm off a bit, which I probably am just a touch, but that's okay. I can add atmosphere later, right? And so I'm just going to smush this color around, create a little bit of modely interest here. I'm going to put that coastline probably back in here create some modeled interest drop that down like that so we get this one starting to come forward maybe a little bit of that lighter warm color hitting some of this right in there little planes coming forward it's kind of fun you know i, I love doing this and it's and this is the one thing that you know, a lot of people like me as a teacher because I'm a very left, I, I'm not a natural artist. Um, I'm a left brain painter. I'm a logical analytical painter. And when I'm doing something like this, it really works for me because it's numbers, it's values, and it's, it's you know, I can, I can calculate it. I can work it out how I can get that dimension and stuff within the painting as it's coming forward here. And so we'll take some of this, maybe change it up. Sometimes add a little green because we're going to be heading to the greens here in just a minute. You know, maybe we add a little bit of green here. Some of these hill shapes here. That's another little bit of one coming up there. And a um, little bit of water. 
keep these colors kind of thin and moving here a bit. You know, we'll just drop this one in here. There we go. Just some of that hill interest there. Well, I'm thinking about bringing that coastline back up over here. So the coastline, some of the, the beach and coastline area here will get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of a bluish gray, the atmosphere, which I'll add back into it, but a little, uh, some light yellowy kind of color right along here, which will be that coastline. And we'll have some rocks and ocean and stuff like that that we'll add. So I'm thinking about bringing some of that coastline back in there. And the other thing that I was thinking here is that, and I didn't, I didn't draw it real well, there's a there's a rock outcrop here before it gets see right there rock outcrop it would be right about here if I'm truly painting Hasita head, which really shouldn't be doing but we're we'll do that and it's really nice because then the beach bends back into this cove and right up over here there's a there's actually a Hasita head lighthouse right up over here and a little house that's right over here that my grandmother told me when I was six years old and went there for the first time. She says, there's ghosts living in there. So, but I don't know if she's telling the truth or not. There's some haystack rocks out here that might be kind of nice to put in. Depends on how much interest we're going to have into our horsemen here. But having some of this, you know, making it visually interesting uh, might be kind of a fun thing to do to let your eye move through the whole painting. It might be kind of fun. But, uh, We'll get some of this beach right back up in here. That's gonna come here. We'll go to that rocky outcrop right back there. We'll put in that beach right back there. And uh, we'll make all this sloping hills and stuff like that towards it. A bit more of a gray, beautiful gray is my, that I love to paint rocks with and stuff is, the, is either burnt sienna or the red and the blue. And uh, so we'll grab some of that gray. That's gonna be right here and we'll just toss in an idea of that rocky area there and uh, it's going to come right along here just the idea and this is going to be all rocky right up here as it heads up right around the corner to that lighthouse but we'll just push some of that back in there no it's hanging out of hard for you to see i know this place very well but uh, that'll work and then i'm going to put this is going to be a, a, an edge that's going to drop off and then another edge that's going to drop off. So they're climbing up this little ridge here and stuff. Now we have this furthest one back there. So basically it's the last mountain plus white, maybe a little bit more atmosphere. And we'll just softly push that one back in there. And that'll, that's all you got to do is take it a little bit closer to the sky and it sits back there. And don't make it too complicated. It doesn't need to be. Maybe a little bit of dark movement, especially on to the right side. You know, a little bit of that. Um, maybe a slightly edge of a bit darker right in front of it so it pushes it back just a bit. And that's all it needs to be back there. Doesn't need to be thrilling at all. Let's take a little bit of the gray. Tap right along that edge, which is going to be the rocky edge there. That's a great place back there to use the palette knife as we go putting in some of the ocean and stuff. Which, before I go here, which, you know, might be a nice, beautiful, deep, aquamarine kind of uh, ocean color here. So a little bit of our Hansa and our blue here. But I don't want to get it too bright here, so... We'll add just a touch of white to this and maybe dirty it up with just a bit of the, because the violet, if I don't take it too much of blue violet, that will uh, dirty it up a bit. And let's see where I am in there. Could have a little bit more, a little bit more dirty, maybe a touch of burnt sienna into that. But don't mix it up too well. Let it all come off of the brush here, a little different. We'll push this little cove in back here. This is just a quick base in, so it's more for color for me to see, so my eye starts to see that color, and I'll just push that in for right now. That's what, uh, you know, then we'll put in all of that, those waves and the beach line, all that kind of fun stuff. We'll do that art thing all over it. And back here, we're going to put in pretty much a solid... Uh, 
uh, let me take just a little water. I do this sometimes, as, and this is even my left hand, I do this sometimes just to quickly block in just the color. That's all I need is the color. And so, you know, thin it out. Let some of the, the light of the, the board take over some of this and uh, be very suggestive with it. Let some of those streaks, and you'll see, you'll get the idea. Be, be very casual, guys. You don't need to be perfect because the, the viewer's going to see this as an ocean. And as long as these colors, these movements get a little bit smaller, a little bit softer, as they go back, you're, you'll get that depth that, that we're going to be looking for back there. Okay, so just, just do it very simply. I created a whole technique that I painted for a long time called, and I still paint it all the time, called Paint It Simply. And it's what I live by is just simple presentations of colors and stuff. And it just gives you a lot of depth, a lot of interest to uh, what it is that you're doing. So there's a start on that. And um, now what we're going to do is come forward. Let's take a little bit of this atmosphere kind of color right down in here, right down in the, into the valleys the misty little valleys that sit in between some of these areas, these main shapes. Push that back down in there, okay? And uh, it will be nice to have some clouds and stuff, even though on this day there's none back up there. But it would be nice to kind of have some of those. Let's, uh, okay, so let's come in and we're going to put in some of the sloping green and those values kind of green, they're right about a six or so. So again, some of our sevens, a little bit of green, burnt sienna, some of my favorite colors. And then we'll lighten these up with this model, all this together. Love the burnt siennas in that as well. So that's a seven, not quite a seven, should be a good solid seven or so. And uh, yeah, and see how much darker that looks. You look at it on a palette, and that's this simultaneous contrast here. So I, I put it around some of these other colors, and then I come out here and put it with so much white, and it just looks so dark here. So I'm going to lighten that up just a bit. And what I want to do is I want to also create some, start to create some vertical movements, which this is all going to be the trees that you see. So we'll create some horizontals but a lot of smaller vertical movements here that uh, we will then introduce some other tones in there as well, smaller verticals, because we want to give the, the viewer the, the feeling that these are nice. And this is really nice to do too with your knife. The knife does this, these types of movements really well. And I just, I love the look of the knife. And so we want some of these verticals. And, and you know, as an artist, you know, the beautiful paintings is, of course, how much work you put into them, right? And uh, so I'll switch back and forth between some of this to put in some smaller, and of course, further away, smaller movements here. And you get some of those vertical movements, like those are going to be trees back there. And some of these shapes can kind of flow into each other here as they come forward here. Suggestive. Don't try to be perfect, just be suggestive. And that will work. Okay. A little bit of water. Sometimes you could even add open medium. It's going to keep it wet, but it, it helps with the translucency of the painting. More transparent kind of look. And that will that will work for what we're what we're trying to do with this. This most of this area up over here is going to get covered up. And as we come forward, we could go a little darker right back here, which is so we'll come right into where the trees meet the sea here, right up there like that, and uh, just tap in some of these small vertical motions there 
Leave some of that feeling, see, like a few lines, a few, a few lines, feelings of the motion. That's what we want. Doesn't need to be perfect, just a few lines. And that will give you the impressions of trees. And you can come back, I'll add a little extender to this. You can come back and add a few little ones to some of these other areas, just a few little light motions there. And uh, that will give some of the feeling there. And of course, back in, as you head further back, you know, and thin it out so it's just a, a, a just a, a whisper of it really and just a few little hits of it there and you'll see just a few ideas that maybe so in other words you got more and then a little less and then a little less as you go back and it's some of that detail starting to disappear there along that edge but see some of this light atmosphere that you get there and in a in a in a painting you'll pick up some of those little light tiny little light areas right back there it's kind of hard for you to see on the monitor but <clears throat> it picks up that as well okay so that works pretty good and let's keep coming forward as i come forward here for right now i'm going to i'm just going to mix up some of this color some pine green burnt siennas nice dirty colors maybe a little blue and white here just kind of vary sometimes a little yellow and I'm going to look and see where that color is it could be a little lighter a little more toned here let's look right up through here these are all the forward these are going to be a lot of trees and a lot of movement so a lot of greens and stuff and they're going to come right up to the fronts of my cowboys here right up in here and I'm just going to as soon as I get some of the cowboys blocked in then I'll be a little more careful with some of this and I'll take some of it in as long as you can see now see like if you go into your cowboy and stuff like that you know, don't sweat it you're acrylic and you can just take a tiny paper towel with just a little bit of water and thin it out I don't always thin it out too much but thin it out a bit right around there so you can see your drawing pretty easy and then as we develop it even more then we can come in and work a little bit more in there but uh, it all works so let's just drop some of this color in most I can have I like to always like set a little bit of a horizontal or a little bit of a movement because that sets the slope of the hill see how it kinda sets the slope and then I come in with smaller movements and break it up so I like to do that so I'm just gonna come right in back into that area that's how I like to approach it and then I'll come in and take off just a bit so I can still see my drawing just, I don't want to give him a green face so but he's gonna be but it's gonna be this nice I don't want to get to I gotta realize that my cowboys here I really want to come forward so I don't want to put him against some really detailed vertical trees they won't come forward does that make sense so we're gonna to want to be kind of careful with you know how we do that and let's just change the tone just a bit and put in some of the slope and then some smaller vertical movements and we'll have a lot more to do and say about that as we get going but uh, that will help get some of this in and let's get some of this right down in here maybe a bit more burnt sienna here I sometimes add this extender just so that it um, it works a little bit it moves a little bit easier so I set a plane and then I'll set some verticals these will be more trees and stuff here right up in here and let's just take it back off my just soften it out around your horse and stuff there and then we'll soften it a little bit later just so we can get the idea of some of that movement paper towel works I'm looking for the movement more than anything else just small vertical movements there and some of this right down through here 
And of course, we'll put that other hill right up in there. So that just starts to set that, that nice feeling. And then one of the, let's yellow this up. What, lighten it up, yellow it up. Let's look to that, let's grab this and maybe a bit more yellow, burnt sienna, kind of a light, you know, autumn or kind of a grass here. And we'll push that in as this slope right here. Right here that sits, that slope that's gonna set that edge of the cliff. It could be a touch lighter. This is also where I do like to use my painting knife because the painting knife gets that beautiful interest to it right away. You can see I get some of that color movement. I want a bit more yellow in that. And see, I just, I just smoosh it through the knife here and I push the knife down pretty hard. My colors are, are pretty loose here. So they, they move together pretty easy. And um, so I'm uh, uh, being a little bit careful not to do it too, too much, push too long, too, too much, because they'll blend totally together. Change the tone just a bit and push in a few more and slightly angled down and that'll give us that hill there. Okay. Sometimes I'll pull my paper towel across and through. Let's put a little bit different kind of a green, yellow green in there as a, a bit of a break or some other different color. And this is just the block in, guys. This isn't the painting. This is the block in for us to, to see what's going to go on in the painting here. Okay. And while we have that knife, and this light color right here. Let's lighten this up. This is almost a beautiful beach color that we can push right in there. It's just a touch yellow. The Oregon beaches are very grayed. Let's put a little blue into that here. Very grayed, not quite that yellow. Let's just push some of that in. And I'm just gonna, I, you know, when I block in like this, I want, I want the edges I want the edges of everything to be soft. And why I do that is because I'm not sure about the details. So what I do is let these edges run into each other here like this as you kind of smoosh those colors together because we're not real sure about where the water is and all that stuff yet, okay? So we're not sure. So let's just put a bit of that back there. That's gonna be in the distance back here, okay? Little edge of the beach, maybe we'll have some more rocks and trees. Little tiny, little things make a difference. A little one right back there. That This little tiny thing doesn't seem like much, but boy, it, it will add a ton to the depth of your painting when you're done. That little bit of light back there, see? And uh, let's just add a bit of that right up here. Okay, so right up there. And then we'll put the rocks in. And I know it's hard for you to visualize it, but I see it, <laughs> okay? And I know it's hard for you guys to see it right now, but it's gonna be great. I think this is gonna be fun. We'll push just a bit of that. It's fun to mix both the, the, the textures of the knife and the brush in a beautiful painting like this. Because the knife does one thing and the brush does another. Now look at how our mountains, you know, when you first put them up, you go, ah, oh, is that really going to be enough? But look at how they're setting up. You know, I could put a little more atmosphere on that back, right back there. And let me just show you how that works, because it'll shove it back. It's a little forward, just a touch. Here's my atmosphere color. I'll just add a little water to it. Got a little touch of yellow in my brush. I don't. I want that lighter blue. Not too much. Just a little bit of the atmosphere over that. And see how that just sets that back. Just a touch more, just boom. And it makes that one come to here. So any time, like sometimes, like if I'm painting a lot of detail in the landscape, I might push a little atmosphere like right back in here that creates a, a triangle effect of that one going further back, see? And then it starts to come forward. So is that one that pushes it back further that way. All kinds of ways to do that. You can do that back up over here or so, you know. 
but all kinds of ways to do that. And uh, But let's keep going right here. We'll take some of our yellow, some of our burnt sienna, a little bit of the green. And value-wise, we're very light up here in the front. And uh, we'll kind of model that together here. And we'll create... This will... We might just take our big brush and get this done. This is just a blocking in color, right? So we might just block in here. We just need this for color, just to start seeing some of this stuff here. And... Yeah, that's going to be good. Very light yellow greens. A little bit of green, some yellow. Yellow oxide, a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I am definitely going to need some more white here. So I'm going to put out a little bit more white here. And that's almost out as well. But we'll try that down in here. Yeah, that's good. We'll get good colors. Lots of colors. We'll do some nice warm grasses right up here into the front. Short, choppy verticals. Sometimes push in a, a horizontal to give it the movement. A little extender or a little water. We'll put some big trees and stuff up here in the front. But this will take away, you know, when I'm painting a landscape that that I want to have a lot of depth to, it's good to take away as much of the white of the canvas as possible. As a matter of fact, many landscape painters will start, and I did for a long time, and I don't worry about it quite as much now, but I did for a long time, and you'll see several of my videos where I do that, where I start on a pre-toned canvas. And that does help. It gets rid, you know, but you want to get rid of these little. We call these the holidays, the canvas holidays of the lights, because that starts to destroy the depth of what it is that you're you're trying to do. And I can see right now that like this particular color working in that ocean right there is a little bit too dark for what I want to do. So I'm going to need it for the depth wise into it. So I'll need to change that. But that's where you start to see that, and that's what I'm you know working on right now is working on that. Now I'm going to step down and brush just a bit to a six here, a four or a six. And when I start to do a lot of detail, I like to go to a, either a small filbert like this. This is a nice pointed filbert. This works well because I do a lot of drawing with the filbert. When I go to a filbert, I do a lot of drawing with the filbert. Here's one of my favorite ones to paint with, my six, but it's got paint in it. <laughs> because I don't always clean my brushes. But that's a nice thing about the acrylics like this. And I'll show you guys this. This is my hand cleaner. And I don't worry about, sometimes, you know, I get rushed and I don't clean my brushes. But the hand sanitizer takes the acrylic off. Even if it's been in there for a year, 60% isopropyl alcohol. Here comes my chemistry again. And 60% isopropyl alcohol breaks the binder, see? And it makes that so I actually clean my brushes here with hand sanitizer and it works really really well cleans them up and then you want to make sure you give that a good rinse here and then your brush is back good again and it, it always works and let's just say you want to clean up your brush because you got all this paint on it just put a little hand sanitizer in your uh, in your paper towel here and go over it several times <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it'll start to clean up your brush, and you can find out what size of brush that was again. But So even though it's it's completely uh, dry and everything, the hand sanitizer is... Now, this doesn't work on all acrylics because not all acrylics are the same, okay? And so some acrylics that won't work on, okay? So Here's my smaller six that I really like to paint with, and I'll use this for uh, starting in the horse. Now, Tom Selleck here is riding a Guello horse, okay, so, which is a, almost like a, a violety gray, and I've made it, the Guello horse, several different ways, blues and uh, some violets and some burnt sienna, some of my favorite ways to do that. 
to make that this kind of a violety gray, a little bit more burnt sienna. That's the color I'm looking for right there. And there's a beautiful, a beautiful horse, Guella for the mare and Guella for the stallion. I think he would, in this movie, he was riding a stallion, I saw. But we're going to just start blocking in a little lighter right up over here. I'm just going to start blocking in some of the, uh, the light. That could be a bit lighter here and maybe a bit redder tone. But see, all of the, the actual tones that I decide that I'm finally going to use, I'll do that um, here towards the end of the painting. This is just for us to identify some of the lights and darks of the painting here. Let's go, let's put in the side here, which is going to be the shadow side of him here. Okay. And so burnt sienna, a little bit of the violets here, and uh, then uh, some blue. And we'll let some of these tones all mix up here a bit. And uh, not, not tremendous here. We'll go a little bit darker right over here. So you can see I'm just stepping back a little bit of the darker tones right up back over here. It's, they usually have a real dark, a blackish mane and tail and stuff. But we'll let, this is just for us to block in. And you can see when I start some of these colors here, what I really want to see is how much it this horse will start to advance. We'll let the light side hit him there. We'll put that in for his eye here. And he'll get a nice light side here. Right here on this side. And right in there like that. So, And I'll probably do some adjustments and stuff here. Um, and uh, maybe some more light and stuff. This is going to be the light side. But just come close. You know, I'm up here around a value 6 to a 7. And we want to come just close to this as we start to block this in here. And you've seen me, those of you that, you know, maybe think, oh, maybe I want to try grow a horse. I have a couple of them up on the... And, of course, I've painted Sorrels and, and all the other color horses and stuff onto the... Um, up onto the channel here, but I do have a lesson of just a Guella horse and uh, as well, so that uh, it, you could go there and look at that um, one. You get more specific with the mixes. Right now I'm just blocking in mostly a dirty violet kind of color here, and I'll change it up a bit. There is some big heavy duty rain falling out here right now. It was supposed to be clear skies all day. <laughs> and now it's just pouring rain. And you don't like that, do you? <laughs> yeah, my little lab here, she doesn't like that. She does not like that at all. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on, come up here, come on. Yeah, she, <laughs> she does not like thunder, lightning, and all that, and it's coming in the distance. So I'm gonna, probably going to, I know you don't like that, do you? <laughs> probably going to have to turn off the cameras in just a minute. She does not like that. So, but... Uh, that blue doesn't belong there. But when we start to paint some of the horse, we'll put some blues and violets and, you know, other colors in there. That's that broken color I talk to you guys about all the time. Yes, I heard that one too, huh? Yeah, there's a thunderstorm coming. We're going to have to turn the cameras off here in a minute. But this is what I'm going to do. Block these in and use these colors of the light and the dark. And... Uh, then I'll go in and, and also base into the sorrels. But I'm probably going to have to take a few minutes of a break here. <laughs> yeah, before she wigs out completely. And uh, turn off the cameras because there's a thunderstorm coming. And if it, we have a power surge or all something, it'll fry our cameras. So give me just a minute. We'll let this pass by. And then I'll come back and we'll finish basing in this uh, particular area in here so we can get an idea of our coastline and, and the horses and how much they're going to advance and we're going to put a big tree there or whatever. Okay, so give me a minute and I'll be back. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, 
that storm passed by. It's been a couple hours that storm passed by. But uh, anyway, you, and you can see in here where I added all the extender, all of this is still pretty good. Even a color like this that dries with the Heritage, if it's been under a couple hours, you can take a little water. Here's a little water on my finger. And you can see you can reconstitute the paint here. But that only happened for a couple hours until the binder starts to set up a little bit more. And so, um, but you can do that. Over here where I added some of the extender, all that is still is still wet. Now, some of this dried down, and I, I'm not real happy with this particular tone here as you dry down. It's not quite red enough. So I'm going to basically go back up over here to this tone that I had, and I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna to it and lighten it up a bit more too. So I wanted a little redder. Now all of that, again, we don't have to worry too much about that, but since I'm here, I'm gonna do it because we're gonna take care of that with broken color. You've seen me in other Westerns do that. That broken color uh, is so very important. And see, that tone's gonna to get me a little closer. It's not light enough. It's gotta, you know, really, really for that tone. Let me check that up there. Golly, it's almost a nine and see, I'm not there. so. And we need to get this quite a bit lighter on this this horse right up through here. So it might take me a couple of times to get there up towards that. I'm right about a seven now. So let's just make it a little lighter right now. This is the light struck area of the horse here. So that will uh, get that color up a little closer there. And let's just take some of that, maybe not quite as light, and just uh, hit this side of her face here right there and it's a good it, like i say it does not have to be perfect because we're going to paint this several times i'm going to do that broken color technique that you've seen me use so many times and that will take care of some of that and uh, you know one of the things that i will also do is i'm going to take some of this green and sometimes i do this uh, sometimes again later sometimes now uh, i'm just going to take some of this and smooth out a little bit of this color and maybe not quite maybe a bit of the green and yellow and light uh, smooth out just a bit here next to the horse where I'm going to have some of those trees and stuff and this will help our horse advance a bit I, I like to you know I don't always do it here this is just something to for you to keep in mind what is one of the things that I say to you all the time that helps advance your painting more than anything is edges not only the values but the edges and stuff that you use uh, within your painting and so we want to make sure that we we are going to establish some pretty good edges in here so let's go back here now some burnt sienna some blue a little bit of our violets here and we'll create some more Guella horse colors here slightly different maybe here this is a, that's a pretty color right down in here and uh, we'll shape up his front leg here a bit and again you know a little more blue a little more burnt sienna and some of those shadowy colors and we're going to uh, change these. Let's give him a nice little knobby knee there as well. We're going to change some of these though as we get into the painting a bit more. Broken color. That is, when I started to learn how to do that, that was the biggest change in my painting, more so than anything else, was broken color. So we'll we'll do that. But see, you're gonna we're gonna take some of these colors, some of these other tones, drag them through, small marks of them, and that's what's gonna give so much interest to the horses here. Okay, so a little blue, and I I when I'm painting with broken color, especially towards the end of this painting, as I start to develop it and work on those broken color tones more than anything else, you will see me really start to um, take that up here really start to change and do a tremendous amount of brush mixing brush mixing to me is the is the real key to broken color that's what gives us all of the the life and energy to the painting and that's what we want to do there's some um, you know here good old Tom Selleck is 
wearing some kind of burnt sienna almost chaps here. So I'll just drop in a bit of the idea of that here for right now. Maybe over here to this other side I add, cool it because it's shadow, so add just a touch of blue, touch of violet to it here. And we'll just, for right now, just, just put in the color. And again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Try not to have too many holidays, but we'll just... And, and I'll put his stirrups in and stuff, but just the idea. Um, he has a lighter colored blanket, saddle blanket here. So we'll just drop in a bit of that right there. Again, keep the edges a little bit soft, a nice burnt sienna, kind of gray burnt sienna, so a little green with it here, saddle. This is just the start of it, so, and I'll keep everything simplistic here. I'll add details and stuff later, okay, so. But I do want to get rid of some of the holidays, and sometimes, you know, you don't need to worry, and I used to always worry about getting all the details correct. We don't, you know, in here, just drop in some dark tone. What is it? It could be the girth strap. It could be something that goes on into the horse. It doesn't need to be perfect down in there. And for so much long, I would always try to, you know, make it something, and then it becomes really stiff. And I think that is what, you know, what uh, artists do now is... You know, or what I know to do now is to, uh, this is a little broken color there, is to not let that get that stiff. Just put in the suggestion of it, and the viewer will take care of the rest of it. Let's take a little burnt sienna and blue, little corner of the brush, and just give the indication there of the horse's eye. Doesn't need to be anything fancy right now. Just the indication, maybe a little bit of that nice bone that sits right up over their eye there. We'll just put that in. That's pretty good. Let's take some softer green, a little yellow, green, white, some burnt sienna. Let's lighten that up just a bit here and push some of that color back in here close to our rider. Smooth him out just a bit so we can get those edges those edges help them advance. A little more light and yellow here to create kind of the ground there. Push the color around. We'll put darks and other things going on in here. And we'll, we'll create some of the horizontal movement that will uh, do a tremendous amount for planes because we got to fix our planes. We've got some nice depth back through here, but still there's just not enough... Not enough refinement, but it's it's close enough to start giving me some ideas. I want to really paint that beach, you know, get in there and paint that beach. But uh, he's got kind of a tan jacket. I love the tan that comes from, especially if I'm using it in my painting, burnt sienna and green. A little bit more burnt sienna. And you can cool it slightly if you want to get more gray with just a touch of blue. It always works really nice. But uh, let's come in. He's got a nice light struck and that's got to be lighter yet, so maybe up around an 8 or so. Maybe even lighter for right now. Yeah, it's going to be even lighter. Let's get it up a little bit lighter here. So 8.5. There we go. Get some of that in there. And again, I, what I'm using now is just a small filbert. This is a number four filbert, or you can go down to a two. I think this might be a two. Um, and just do some sketch almost. And what I like to do is use just the corners of it and do a little, you know, so here's a little shadow. And I, I do almost like a little drawing sketching with it here. Putting in some of that edge of his jacket there and his coat and let's, just use this more over onto this side as the shadow, not quite that dark. So we'll mix just, and again, all this changes with broken color. Just get some of these tones on right now. 
because all this will change with the broken color. So we'll get some of that. And that's what we want to have is that nice light dark. I'm going to put a little extender with this. It cause, it'll stretch the pan out, cause it to, um, cause it to, to uh, you know, slide all over the surface a little bit more. Let's put just a touch of blue in there. That just changes the tone. That's what I always like to do is just change it just a little bit. As you work through the planes of shadow and light, changing it ever so slightly here a little bit more blue it's going to have kind of a reddish bandana on so we'll do that here that looks pretty good a little bit of the jacket coming down here and again i'll just kind of suggest i'm not going to like put anything in perfect right now. I'll let some of those tones just kind of run into each other a bit and keep him. And you know, a lot of times, like when I paint figures, those of you that watch, like a great place, uh, you know, for where I paint figures, little beach scenes or uh, like the little fishermen and stuff you do. And I tell you, when you paint figures, one of the things I like to do that I learned um, was paint just shadow and light. And then we go back in and break that up with little half tones and stuff that work really nice. Let's just take some reddish kind of colors here and uh, we'll gray those down just a bit, model some of that color and uh, drop in the idea of this bandana that they all wore around their necks in case it got a little dusty. So, just some of that, and let's um, dirty that down. A little green, a little blue, it'll dirty that down, darken it down. The green, of course, is almost a compliment, and the blue cools it just a bit, so you get to that shadow side over there. I don't need to be that perfect, perfect with it. Let's go burnt sienna. Let's keep our flesh tone right now very simple, burnt sienna and white. Maybe just a touch of yellow. Warm it just a bit more. And if it, if it appears too bright, just toss a little tiny bit of green into it. And that grays it. See how that green just grays it right down. And let's just keep this very simple. Right down into his neck there. And uh, yeah, just a bit of the light jacket color there. Keep it all really, really simple. Let's um, maybe even a more of a tan color. Get some of this green tan kind of color here. So almost like a shadow there to that side. And uh, green and burnt sienna. Maybe a touch of blue as if you need to, just as a real dark hair color here. Just very simple right now. Very, very simple. And uh, I like burnt sienna blue is uh, makes those lovely gray slightly blue sided. And this will make his his hat color there that I see. And of course, again, you know, we'll put it in just light and dark here, but we will uh, really go for the the uh, broken color when we go to paint this. So there's the shadow side and then there's the light side. We'll lighten up quite a bit and we'll put that light plane down even a little bit lighter. But you can see even with the simplistic painting that we're doing here we're starting to see him a bit, right? And We'll push just a bit of that. Now, see, it's the shadow that's really going to make that. So, when, you know, let me just drop one in here just because I want to do it. But up there by the, the crown, the top part of the hat, the indentation and the crown and the fold. See, you start putting little touches like that in. The round little part of the shadow back here. That just starts helping so much to shape the hat. A little bit of the... Let me get my stick to help steady, steady my hand here. A 
bit of the curvature shadow underneath that the brim right there and that just helps so much you know by starting to shape that hat and <clears throat> your little figure can be done he's going to be mostly in shadow you know he's mostly going to be shown complete you know, almost completely in shadow here but we can make some darker shadows to it's a little soon but see sometimes i like to do that the idea of his neck his the the line of his chin and his neck there um maybe a line or two or just just some motion in there between you know it, it doesn't take much like let's just take a a touch of the light jacket color here and just drop some of that in and if you drop it in on both sides see the color will carry through and the viewer will say that's the jacket right there see and the edge of it and stuff there and so you carry that through so and suggestive everything gets very very suggestive of him so and that's what I like so we'll get a bit of his backside there and I like to use the small filbert because I could use the edges to draw just a bit you know and uh, let's get some of this green in there fill up some of that that space there that looks pretty good my chair is a little squeaky again today there we go and again we're going to have light and shadow in here so that'll be coming up and I might want to lighten this guello horse just a bit on this side a little bit more light here nice light reddish gray here that's going to go just a touch more sienna there we go drop that down but again i don't want to make a perfect line but see as i put some of this light this light color on it's going to help that horse advance just a bit more and that's what i want to see and that tone just dried down again a little more than i wanted so i'm going to drop it in one more time there and again light and shadow concentrating that light and shadow there and uh this line's a little straight in that eye's a little big so i'll just eclipse it just a bit down here that's better a little more light up at the top here there we go now that it just helps you know helps me see him i'm, I'm not perfect now we're going to do a sorrel here kind of a sorrel with a blaze so a little light color all very variations of burnt sienna burnt sienna and yellow over to the warm side light burnt sienna and yellow here more of a it makes it orange you can even add a little red orange you know make that uh, some yellows over here get over towards a lighter orange here back up over onto this side here yeah that's a pretty color light and shadow normally i start with shadow but i'm gonna do light right now don't ask me why it just happens sometimes let's put a little light light hitting right back there light will hit almost the same places here because they're almost in the same position so try to keep it kind of consistent here there maybe a bit on this back one right there okay shadow head over to some burnt siennas nice deep sorrel color and if that's too bright which might be just a bit of green we'll tone that down and you can see it immediately grays that down a bit you know and i'm painting with my little two here that's why i'm working so hard i should go back up here to my flat that i like let's gray this down so a little more green and again we'll we'll just grab some of the quick shapes here of this horse and then we'll we'll paint him later with the broken color that will really 
give him the feeling of a tail there. And uh, maybe a bit of yellow and burnt sienna, some of that green, so the tone changes a little bit here. Here, give him that knobby knee. Working forward there. Maybe a bit more of the, you know, a nice light. Whoops, there's some water right there. A nice light, just a touch of red here. Orange kind of color. And again, you know, you don't, I, I like the, the color tones to change. And when we start to really paint like this other Guello horse here, we'll add some of these sorrel colors into this Guella color right into here so those two will harmonize. That's what I'll be looking for. Um, but right now it's too soon to do that, even though sometimes, you know, I, I, I just go off and I just add it, but it doesn't hurt. But it's a lot of it's a lot of work to do it right away, and especially if you if you decide to change the tone later. So we concentrate more on it's not that you can't do it, but we concentrate more on blocking in light and shadow, and you know getting some of the warm cool into it, and then we'll change some of the other colors up a little bit later. Let's just warm up some of that sorrel color here for the, the side of his face here maybe uh, leave some of that light there build that strong and that lighter blaze but to build that strong uh, just the idea but Build that strong bone over his eye here. A little bit of shadow. Kind of square up his face there just a bit. There. Very simplistic idea of the dark. Again, I like to use just a corner of the brush, just the idea of his eye there. I like to put those in. There's a lot of artists that don't put that in right away. I, I like to do it. I always, no matter what it is I'm painting, I like them to have a face pretty much right away. So <clears throat> I can start talking to them, basically. So let's take some of that lighter green. Get rid of some of those light holidays there. And... Uh, you know, it's it to paint the horse. It's just mostly light and shadow. So that's what we're going to concentrate on here, is light and shadow. I like that little bit of extender every once in a while makes that paint really slide. Here, here we go. And a uh, little bit shadow here, just like we did on the nose of that one. Just a nice flat brush pull. There, just to kind of square up his his face there. Simple. Everything stays simple. Okay. Some nice dark blue burnt sienna. Maybe a little red to help gray it. Just nice dark ideas of his chaps and stuff here. Let's see. Yeah, that works. Just... Very simplistic. They both had little canteens I didn't put in. So might want to make a suggestion of those. Where does that one sit right here? So I don't forget it. Because I think that's kind of a neat little neat little thing that that's where they did have them. So a little bit of that. Let's just put down some of these shapes. And again, nothing perfect, just suggestive. Move the colors together. He has a light saddle blanket as well. Here, burnt sienna for the, shot, for the saddle here. Again, just very suggestive shapes. 
need to get it perfect. Just suggestive color marks. And I'll really, towards the end, like when I go to paint his stirrups, and matter of fact, we might put the edge of his shoes in here. When we go to do that, it is uh, paint it more with shadow and a drawing technique more than anything else. It keeps it just simple. Keeps it simple shapes. That's all we need. Simple shapes. And a little light tan on his hat here. Maybe a little bit of the grayer color. Time to go down to that smaller brush. Let's again just go with that burnt sienna and white. Maybe a touch of the yellow. Simple flesh tone for right now. A little lighter, just a touch. Because it's going to dry darker. Always remember that about your acrylics. Just a touch darker. So always just a touch lighter than what you think. Keep it simple. Let's drop in a bit of the shadow side of the hat. Shadow underneath the brim and down here. His head's turned sideways a bit. A bit of brown. Or some hair idea. And again, I, I start more than anything else, real suggestive sketching here. Suggestive sketching. Got a ways to go on that hat, but I'll get it. And again, I'm going to take some of that softer green, yellow, a little burnt sienna, some white. Here, let's get that a little more yellow. Real light color, you know, the gray, the, the, and I'll do a little bit of negative painting here, which is, you know, painting the background around him here to soften out some of that stuff and it'll pop him forward a bit. Lots of little work to do in here, little touches of color that just are gonna add so much to the painting but I want to get in and start working it but you know we have a lot to do before we get there there like that just to, but he's starting to come forward into the into the painting and little little things like those super core darks like a, a violet let me show you what it does like a real dark super core we call a little violet a little green with that violet, you make a real dark color. And I may add thalo green blue to this palette to get this real, real dark. But see, when I start that real core dark, see how dark that is? When I start that up and through here into just a few of the areas of him, look at how much more he advances because that dark is not seen anywhere there. And dark colors, when you have this much light, the dark colors create that contrast, and these dark colors are gonna advance. So if we use some of that, like into the deep shadows here onto the horse and stuff in some areas here, we'll really get a nice advancing of some of this, uh, of the horse here. And, you know, maybe some of that, the, the Guelo has the dark bands anyway. It's a bay. It's, it, it has the bay gene in it. So, you know, it's it gets the, or excuse me, the dun gene. So they get the dark, darker uh, mane and tails. And they're real pretty. They're, they're you know, like a buckskin and, or, you know, the light colored palomino. But they, they, so they got that dun gene in there. So you paint them up with that, some of that. So you can see those darks, see how they start to really, start really coming forward. And I use it in a simple painting like this. I use it more in a sketching kind of technique like this. And they, and it really helps in starting to drive it forward. We got a long ways to go, but that helps you there with that. Now, 
Same kind of a gray, grayish kind of a jacket here up onto this guy. So let's just get a little color in for right now. He's gonna have, I'll just go right through his shoulder there right now. We'll put that back in. Let's darken that up a bit. Blue that with a little burnt sienna. Just paint for shadow and light right now. So he's shadowed down on this side. Okay, and we'll darken down a bit more. And we'll just put in the idea of his arm here. Just the idea is holding the reins there with his arm. A little bit of shadow coming off on his, on his leg there. And then that allows you, you see some of the, let's put in that bit of the sketching there on the saddle, but you can see uh, some of the shape. Here's we fill in, you know, where you might want to fill in some background or like just to start to get his shape a little bit better. Let's give him that nice reddish scarf bandana here as well. A little darker on this side. there and it's gonna swirl a little bit more than what I have so we'll we'll do that we'll get some of that in there but right now see it's just really suggestive and more than anything else you know light and shadow where do you see the shadows where do you see some of the cast shadows and stuff like that so maybe a little bit of shadow underneath that bandana around his neck there it just helps a lot just to shape him just a bit, so. And uh, let's get his hat straightened out here, a little shadow down to that side, down this back side. He's looking out towards this, out here, towards this beautiful ocean we don't have in yet. So, yeah, so that sets that part of him. Let's get this, uh, a little bit more of a sorrel because we didn't finish this leg here. There, and maybe a little lighter orange. Some white. Nice light color just like we have on that that guello stallion there. Or This one right here, a little light. There, square up his face there a bit. He's gonna have that nice blaze that I want down there, but we'll take some time getting that. But it starts to get him. He starts to, you know, it, it, this is the thing is, I don't, you know, for the longest time, I tried to always, paint them absolutely perfect. See how I use different edges of the brushes there? You know, I try to paint them absolutely perfect and I like the horses so much better when I work at them in, in stages and tones and change and, you know, little, rather than trying to, and you know, trying to get it perfect right away. I build them up. That's what I like more than anything else. But, okay, so that's got them uh, that's got them kind of based in now the uh, last thing that I would do here before I consider this this kind of blocked in is maybe um, let's add some grounding shadow here to this side here some let's get that a little cool green and violet a little burnt sienna a nice cool shadowy kind of color here uh, maybe not quite that dark so let's get some yellows in there and a little bit of light here. We'll get this, the cast shadows just help so much, you know, into the painting. And we're gonna, of course, do the grasses and stuff through here, but 
cast shadows just help us, you know, set some of the, uh, you know, where the sunlight is and um, set the horses and stuff onto the ground like you see here. And of course we'll do lots. This is just real quick. We'll do lots of stuff to this. Let's get some more yellows and lights here. Just work those through a bit, just to break up, just to, I like to, in, a, in other words, remember what I said earlier, no hard, no super harsh edges, and I just don't like to have super harsh edges in there. We can take just a little water, some of this color that's right here like this, and let's just toss that around, smaller, just some of the, especially, you know, some of these darks that will work other, you know, nice small verticals here, but this will work other grasses and stuff coming in here as we develop the painting. And you'll see some of these, these darks that are really here, especially as we maybe come forward here, a little more green, burnt sienna, some of these other colors, green and burnt sienna working up through here are gonna help, you know, maybe there's shadow of a tree that we might put in here or something like that. But these darks, small, just work your brush around here. Add those in. Those really, really help. Um, and if we decide to put something back through here, let's go a little lighter and yellow. Lighter and yellow yet. Let's get some of these different colors. I'm going to do this a lot, and I'll bring out some different brushes like you've seen me do in other westerns and stuff, and uh, we'll act like we know what we're doing. Okay, so, but this just gives me visually an idea, see? That's what I'm looking for, is this visual idea. I don't have to be perfect with anything. Just gives me this visual idea. Now, before I, I call this at this stage... What I, you know, there's a few areas that I could clean up to make them, you know, advance a little bit more, um, maybe structure-wise, anatomy-wise here. We need to get his belly in a little bit more, right there. Some things I need to do, some, some anatomy things and stuff like that, clean him up a bit. But uh, also get some of those colors, get, get rid of some of those holidays and stuff but one of the things I want to do is put just the idea of this beach in a bit more just want to do it so I want to use some I'm just going to take some blue down into some of these colors and this will carry the colors the ocean will carry the colors of the composition Let's set this down and get myself a new paper towel and uh, let's look at that a little bit more violet here and I'm just gonna kind of dirty up my palette with some of this that's kind of a pretty color maybe just a bit brighter just a so the violet and some whites here let's just work that in a bit okay and some other color right back in through there so that ocean's gonna go in there I want to do that um, use the brush, use the knife. Both of them work really, really well. Um, let's take some of this lighter yellow, soft, gray yellow. Maybe some open medium. This will keep it wet. I'm not interested in that, but it's going to add some translucency to it. And I just love how this strokes over the surface when I add this. So if I'm going to do... I want to get in here and start painting this beach, which we'll do in the next time here. But I do want to add just a touch of that. Maybe just the idea of it here and there and along back here. Just a bit of it. Now I'll need to atmosphere some of that just a bit more. And you can just let it dry up and just atmosphere it. But let's just, I don't want to make this beach yet have too much interest 
because it will uh, pull away from the painting. We'll drag it right down into the water like you see me do with so many other seascapes. Okay, and um, we'll take some burnt sienna with some of these blues here and we'll create some more of those little rocky structures. I want to create that rocky structure out there. I want to really get in there and do that, but we can't right yet. A little too soon. But we can give an idea here. There. So I just, I, and what you see me do is a lot of times I'll use it and I'll use the edge of the brush and push it flat. And what I'm trying to do is make a different kind of mark every time. That's really what I want to do. And I want to blur this, even though you might get a good looking rock, you want to blur it a little bit because we don't have the interest yet into the rest of the painting, okay? So we've got to be kind of careful that we don't paint more interest into one area than the other. A little bit of tree motion there and a little more beach right up against that edge there. See how I just break that edge? and let those edges override each other so I don't get a solid line. It's just, it's, it's fracturing. It's the best way to say it. Kind of fracturing the edge right there. And I might just take a little blue and light just so I can get a visual here of what a water line will look like on there. Just the idea. Okay, we don't need to be don't need to be perfect with it just an idea so I can see kind of like how much I'm going to want to be doing in this surf line just and see I use the corner of the brush you see me use the palette knife before there with that kind of stuff so all different kinds of ways but it just gives me a an idea maybe I'll take just a bit of this right out over here and see, just a little soft light blue color right back there. Into the distance, it doesn't take very much, see? And you know, like your palette knife, is your, your painting knife is very good for this. I don't know what I just did with mine. I might have to use a brush here for a second. Because I, oh, there it is. Okay, so I take just a touch of that light, dirty it down just a bit so it's not pure white, and just roll and flatten it out, lift it up, flatten it down, and that creates the little highs and lows of little waves back there, see? So you don't want a straight line. You want to give it a broken line of little stuff here. And uh, break that up just a bit like that. And it gives it a, a little bit more distance. We have lots to do right out all of in here. But we're getting there, okay? So that's the first video there. We're getting there. And um, then we'll come in and I'll show you more details. I'll show you more of the stuff here. We have to decide if we're going to put a cloud or two up there. A lot of work has to go up in here yet. And the big trees and stuff. So it might even take another one. It might even take three videos. We'll see how much you know you tolerate painting this uh, particular western. One like this will take me, I'd like to work on something like this a full day. For a big, um, you know, when I do a, a big commission piece or something like that, I may work on it several days. Uh, there are some times with the big commission paintings and stuff, this is a small one, so I can go pretty quickly. But um, on big ones and stuff like that, I might paint on it for, you know, a couple of days, put it away for several weeks and come back and then just hit little little sparks of color and stuff like that, violating the a la prima look, you know, a la prima one time through. But a lot of commission painters and stuff like that do that because sometimes, and it's happened to me, sometimes you finish something up and then you notice that a few days later what you did wrong and so, uh, you know, you, uh, you try not to have that, but we have a lot of definition that we have to do to pull this part of the painting forward, which I'll do with you. We'll do that in the next maybe one, maybe two videos. We'll see how it goes, okay? Thanks so much. I appreciate it, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy setting up, and again, you don't have to paint horse and rider. You can just go do a couple of trees here, and we'll give a lot of depth 
we'll, we'll put a lot of depth and a lot of interest into the scene going back there, which we still have yet to do. But uh, that would make uh, that would be fun too. But it's really good practice, guys, to do that horse and stuff, and you know, bring that forward and practice your depth. Get your depth of field and how much interest it is to bring that depth of field into your painting. Develop your eye that way. Okay. All right. Almost out of time on the old video there. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.